Welcome into week eight of the replies, where we break down the most viral moments each week of the Big Ten football season. I'm your host, Emily Eman, joined by former Buckeye Joshua Perry and former Husker Kenny Bell. Guys, starting off with the longest game in college football history, Illinois and Penn State went to nine overtimes. We got to see the new OT format where each team trades two point conversion attempts. Joshua, how about the Illini, though, coming through at the end? Yeah, it's, I mean, it was a wild game. Awesome for the Illini. They talk about a signature win that you can build a program off of. This was one of those. But, uh, I mean, you get into overtime and, and it's almost like, man, like, why are we here? But it was still so exciting to watch the teams go back and forth. Obviously, Penn State on the wrong end of that one. But the Illini brought their aim game and it, it was really running the football. They did it really well. Yeah, I think it showed uh, Coach Bielema and these guys really had to do what they were doing. Uh, things are changing in Champaign. I love the meme that had the like 20 offensive linemen. <laughs> or I saw one that had that had all nine out down offensive linemen and it said like how your grandpa says football should be played every down. Uh, you love to see it and especially when it pans out. I mean, you talk about a nine overtime game and they ran the ball what 60, 70 times. You're talking about a tired defense. So hats off to Coach Billima and that Champaign gang. That well done by the by Illinois. I'll say this, too. Uh, For Brett Bielema, he challenged that offensive line in the bye week as well. And those guys answered the challenge. It's exactly what you want to see. I feel like we all aged like 10 years during that game. I feel like I came out a new person. So hats off to the Illini. Next up, Blake Corum doing my cats dirty, breaking ankles left and right, and then showing up to the presser. And whatever the heck these shades are, shout out to our social media king, Brent, for this one. But... Kenny, what impressed you most about Corum last weekend and so far this season? Uh, I mean, it might be the Cyclops. Are those shades, Cyclops shades? I, at first when I saw it, I thought it was a headband and just messing around, but <laughs> apparently they're sunglasses. Uh, but I mean, what what impressed me most is how, how well he fills in for Hassan Haskins. I mean, there's no drop off at that running back position. And that jump cut is, I mean, I, I've always been impressed with the athleticism of running backs and the beating that they take throughout a game for him to be making cuts like that this late in the season um just impressive hats off yeah from a, a defender's perspective that's the most dangerous type of running back you make him miss in a phone booth and there was the jump cut up at first but then he had that little shake there at the end and it's like i don't know how you want guys to defend that like do you look at his hips do you look at his shoulders it doesn't matter because he's going to make you miss one way or another um, that's the michigan run game right now is they can hit you with that lightning with Corum, but then you got Haskins, like you said, that dude is gonna get you tough yards. I haven't seen that guy get knocked back on a tackle yet this year. It's been very impressive. Next up, Ohio State putting on an offensive clinic in Bloomington last weekend, six touchdowns in just the first half. This Buckeye offense is the best in the Big Ten right now, averaging over 49 points a game, which is over 11 points more than Michigan, who is next. JP, in one word, what are your thoughts on this Buckeye offense? They are going to work right now, and it's what we have come to expect out of Ohio State offenses, but you see the young players starting to develop, and the veterans really taking the lead the lead there. It's not only the best in the Big Ten, it's the best in the country right now. Uh, so it's been really impressive. It seems like any time they want to go down and score points, they can. Hunter's not getting a lot of work, so I know that guy's probably sitting on the sidelines like, man, I might should have gone somewhere else. But it's a really good offense, and the defense is starting to come along too. Yeah, I mean, you talk about the punters not getting work. The the kicker's not getting work for field goals either. All he's getting to do is kick extra points and kick the ball off. This Buckeyes offense is just electric from the receiving core to the running backs to the big boys up front. Stroud's really starting to make, make a turn. It's impressive. What is most impressive to me about, about Ohio State offense is the competition that they're going against in defenses, right? They're not going against slouch defenses uh, there's a lot of great defense being played in the Big Ten right now. Uh, to see Ohio State just demantle, dismantle uh, Big Ten defenses week after week is um, kind of frightening. Yeah, they got the test coming up, though, because they got Penn State, who's still a really good defense. Michigan State and Michigan still out there as well. Um, and Purdue, who's actually been a really good defense this year, is on Ohio State's schedule. So they got some challenges out there for sure. Next up, we have Marvin Harrison Jr. looking like his dad out there, just shaking off defenders. Kenny, what do we like from him? I mean, everything. The kid's electric. He's like like we had just talked about prior to this. We're talking about true freshmen out there making a ton of plays almost every Saturday. And um, the fall off from Chris Alave and um, 
Garrett Wilson is obviously not much here with this young with this young star. So I'm excited to see how his career unfolds, especially in the Ohio State offense. I just want to point out on this highlight that we're showing right here, and this is no shade to Micah McFadden because he's one of my best, just most favorite defensive players in the conference. But he shook him. That is an All-American that he made miss on that play. This guy is young, but he's going to be really good. Last up here, we have Wisconsin gaining a ton of momentum. They have the number one rush defense in the country. And linebacker Leo Chanel went off again against the Boilers. Career high three and a half sacks and five and a half tackles for loss. And then the Badgers run game looked incredible. Ches Malusi, Braylon Allen, who by the way is 17, both had career high days. JP, do you think Wisconsin has a shot to find a path to Indy? They still have Iowa and Minnesota coming up. Well, I think the old combination for winning games in football is to play great defense and to run the damn ball, which they've done both of. Uh, so they've got a shot, absolutely. And you look at this team, you talked about Leo Chanel, and he's coming off of a game where he had like 20 tackles, and then to back that up in another game with three and a half sacks was really impressive. But you look at that number on the ground, 290 yards. That's the way that they're going to have to win games, but it seems like anything they want on the ground, they can get. You're absolutely right, JP. And it seems like, I mean, Wisconsin over the past decade has been the poster child for great football. You know, they they run the heck out of the football with phenomenal running backs, and then they play great defense, and they're set very sturdy in the middle with great linebackers. And that's exactly what Leo Chanel has been playing like. He's reminded me of Chris Borland back when we played, JP. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're getting shades of that for sure. Just a guy who understands football. He can get you down in the in the trenches and make plays down there, but he gets sideline to sideline too. And speaking of which, shout out to the Badgers because I'm going to be in Madison this weekend for the Iowa game. I'm looking forward to that one. Should be pretty fun. Thanks for tuning in to week eight of the replies. Have a good weekend, and we'll catch you next week. And if you're in Madison, say hey to Kenny.